Hello, welcome and thank you for joining us. I'm Andrew Tadman, the Reference Coordinator for the East Baton Rouge Parish Library System. Um, today you'll find out all about Baton Rouge City Key, which is a resource the library has sponsored for probably close to eight years now. Um, the original idea was to map assets in our community, uh, to identify patterns and areas that are underserved, for example, which parts of town don't have access to grocery stores or urgent cares, and the site has evolved a great deal since then. So now in partnership uh, with the Conduit Healthy Communities Institute, Healthy BR from the Mayor's Office and the City Parish GIS Department, you'll see a rich resource filled with local health, social and economic data. Accurate and current data from reliable sources is absolutely crucial for making decisions. And importantly, the localised data of City Key makes it even more valuable in some cases down to the neighborhood or census tract level. As a library system, we've used City Key to inform our decisions. As reference librarians, we've used it to answer the public's questions, and we've had many nonprofit and health partners who've used it to gain grant funding. So now I'm gonna turn it over to Cara, who does an amazing job and is the driving force behind City Key, and definitely the best person to tell you more. Thanks, Cara. Thanks, Andrew. All right, so for our presentation today, all attendees will be on mute. If you'd like to ask a question, there's a Q&A box on the WebEx panel. And feel free to type your question in any time um, and we might answer it immediately or at the end, we'll definitely leave time to answer those questions. And we will be recording this presentation so you can refer to it in the future or pass it along to friends or colleagues. So here's our agenda for the next 45 to 60 minutes. Um, we'll talk a little bit about um, us and welcome you. And then we will talk about the website, take a tour, and then again, leave time for that Q&A. So welcome, nice to meet you. My name is Kara Woodard and I'm a senior account manager at Conduit Healthy Communities Institute. We have a few background slides and then we'll hop online to learn how to access the data and features on CityKey. The Conduit Healthy Communities Institute has been a leader in community health field for more than 13 years. We've conducted over 200 community health assessments and implementation strategies with partners across the country. We also provide strategic direction for community health initiatives, and we're known for our award-winning customized technology platforms. Along with powerful analytic tools, our platforms provide access to continuously updated population health and socioeconomic data to help tell your community's story. We work with organizations across the country, including hospitals and health systems, health departments, collaboratives, and nonprofits. Next, let's discuss the platform. The HCI platform consolidates over 150 community indicators to allow you to monitor and improve community health. Instead of taking time and resources to find and collect the data, you can use those resources to impact the community. The platform is built with a set of core indicators that come from a combination of 26 national and state data sources, and data is updated continually throughout the year. Most sources update annually, and our promise is to have those updates reflected on CityKey within 90 days. Approximately 60% of the indicators on the site are tied directly to health, and 40% are quality of life measures. Most data is available at the parish level, but there are also indicators available at census place, neighborhood, zip code, and census tract level. And when we develop our core indicator list, we consider a number of factors, like the validity of the data and the source, the reliability of the source, and whether they'll continue to replicate the data, and data availability. The framework for indicator selection is based on the Health and Human Services Healthy People Initiative, and we try and align our indicators as best we can to a number of the Healthy People benchmarks so that communities can track indicators against national targets. We provide indicators in a number of different data visualizations. Multiple comparisons are noted. There are customizable charts tracking trends, 
and disparities between age, race, and gender are highlighted when available. Each of these elements are available to download in graphic or CSV form to use in your own reports and presentations. Each indicator with data from more than one locale is mapped. The mapping feature allows you to overlay different comparisons to provide geographical insights on the data. You can customize your map view before exporting it. And demographic data is provided by Claritas and includes 250 elements available at the state, parish, neighborhood, and census tract level. This data includes population, housing, economic, education, transportation, occupation data. And the platform allows you to add an unlimited number of local indicators to CityKey. If there's data that your organization collects, please connect with Andrew and we'll can see if adding it to the site is a possibility. So how can you use this data? CityKey can be a central source for health data to support the community's work and research. It can be used as a resource for completing assessments, scholarly reports, finding funding opportunities and the data to support grant applications, designing the implementation strategy through our Promising Practices module, and tracking implementation strategy metrics and highlighting collaborative priority areas through priority pages and resource collections. All right, let's go online. So this is our homepage for CityKey. Scroll through. We have some quick links to COVID information and resources, the vulnerability in food insecurity indices, disparity data on our African American population. You can find data by neighborhood, look at the community priorities, view mapped resources. There's a highlight on healthy eating and physical activity, as well as households with an internet subscription. And at the bottom, we have some community happening. Jumping back up to the top, through the Healthy BR priorities, we can read the whole 2018 Community Health Needs Assessment, or we can discover what the goals are for each priority area. For instance, within Access to Care, we can see the goals to increase the number of patients who attend their primary care appointments by 5%, screen 80% of patients with the Common Social Determinants of Health Survey at least once per year, and we can see the primary and secondary drivers that contribute to these goals. All right, let's jump into the data. So our first resource that we'll visit is the Socio Needs Index, and that can be found by going to Dashboards, Socio Needs Index. And this tool gives us a quick overview of areas within East Baton Rouge Parish that have the highest level of need. The tool helps to measure socioeconomic need that is correlated with poor health outcomes by combining multiple indicators into a single composite value. As a single indicator, the index can serve as a concise way to explain which areas are of highest need and why you may need to focus your efforts on those areas. So all zip codes in the United States are given an index value from zero, low need, to 100, high need, Zip codes are then ranked from one to five based on their index value, color-coded and displayed on an interactive map. So you can see that five correlate with darker areas on the map and areas of greater need. So many clients use this tool in their grant application process to show geographic need. You can download this information to a CSV file here, export the bar chart, or export the map as well. We similarly have a food insecurity index laid out similarly to the socio needs index with an index score and ranking value as well. We'll be releasing additional indices as the year comes to an end, so be on the lookout to CityKey to see what those might be. All right, so to see indicator data for the parish, visit dashboards, 
and community dashboard. And this page is a launch point to any dashboard or indicator that you'd like to view. From here, you can build a custom dashboard where you can do a detailed search and save your results. We'll see that in a moment. You can search by keywords. So if I type in obesity, we can see related indicators. I can jump to the one that I'm interested in, or I can X out those I'm not, and show the rest on the dashboard. I can search for an indicator using the drop-down menu. So all indicators show health indicators first and then subtopic alphabetically. So we have health, alcohol, and drug use, health cancer, health, county health rankings, health diabetes. I can also type in directly and jump to an indicator. Or we can search by location. If you hit the pinpoint here, it will open up a map where you can search by map. So say I want to look for neighborhood data. If I click on the neighborhood I'm interested in, it will show me data for that locale. Or you can use the drop-down menu. So we show um, locations from largest to smallest. So the parish will appear first, and then our census places or cities, and the neighborhoods, zip codes, and census tracts. You can also navigate to a pre-built dashboard. So I'm gonna go through a few of these dashboards down here below. First, we'll have a look at the all data dashboard. And this displays all the data on the site. So at the top, we have a drop-down menu where we can change our locale. We'll give it a moment. There we go. All right, so um, we can change our locale here using the drop-down menu. So if I want to look at data for a different location, I can just select it here, and my dashboard will reload. So as I scroll down, we can see our topic area, our subtopic area, each indicator name, the indicator value, the time period of the data, and then all available comparison types. We have a legend over here on the left-hand side that pops in and out to learn more about these comparison types. And if you hit the More button, it will open up the Help Center, where you can learn specifically about the different gauges and icons. You can download the files. Or while you're at the Help Center, if we go to the home page here, you can search by keyword um, for anything that you might want additional resources on or search by different categorical boxes. All right, so closing out the legend. Um, if you use this arrow, it will jump you back up to the top. So the view that we're looking at now is our um, row view, but you can also turn on something called hard view for any dashboard by clicking on this icon. And what that does is it takes each indicator and turns it into a downloadable graphic. So if I hit save card, it will save that file as a JPEG where you can easily put it into a presentation. They also have colorblind mode. Um, and what that does is it turns a thumbs up or thumbs down on those different gauges and icons that may be difficult to ascertain what they mean if you have trouble seeing in color or maybe you're printing in grayscale. All right, so both of those features you can turn on and off up here. And so this is the All Data Dashboard. I'll scroll down for a moment to the bottom. And so we have two full pages that look like this. All right, jumping back to our Community Dashboard landing page. The next dashboard that we'll view is the Disparities Dashboard. And this indicator, this dashboard has all indicators that have breakout data by topics such as race and ethnicity, age, and gender. And as I scroll down, as you hover over each chart, 
it will tell you the percentage value and both the absolute value difference and percentage difference from the overall value. And when there's a significant disparity, the bars will highlight as red or green. And if confidence intervals are available, but there's no significant disparity, so for instance, these ones will not see those color change. And then if there's gray bars, that means that the source did not provide confidence intervals, but in this case, you can clearly see that those less than 65 um, have a higher, a lower rate of cancer by age in the Medicare population. So each time you see this three-line hamburger icon means that you can download and save that graph or chart. So again, this is the disparities dashboard. Back to our community dashboard landing page. Um, the next one that we'll look at is our Healthy People 2030 Prevention Agenda Progress Tracker. And in this dashboard, we highlight all indicators on the site that have a Healthy People 2030 target. And the icon indicates whether or not the targets have been met, so you can see how your community compares to these national benchmarks. So here we have Healthy People 2020 has been met for these indicators, and we're working towards progress on Healthy People 2030 goals. Some indicators are new for HP 2030 this time around, for instance, insufficient sleep and alcohol impaired driving death. So jumping back up to the top again, you can change your locale using the drop down menu and see those Healthy People 2030 targets there. Our next dashboard that we'll visit is the indicator list by location. This one here. And this is a comprehensive list of what indicators are available on the site and at what locations. Um, so as I scroll through, a lot of the indicators are available at the parish level. And then some we can see drill down to the census place, zip code, census tract, and or neighborhood level. You can also use this dashboard to jump to indicator data for that locale. So for instance, if I wanna see persons with a hearing difficulty at the neighborhood level, if I click on this check mark, it will take me to the indicator detail page for that indicator. Um, so this is a great place to see all the indicators on the site and they're sorted by their topic and subtopic area. And you can export this list as well to have a handy reference of what's available on CityKey. So those are some of the pre-built dashboards that you can explore. They also have some topic priority-based ones here. But to do your own custom search and save the view of the data, we'd go up here to the top right to build a custom dashboard. And from here, you can either hand select or filter indicators. So I'm gonna click here to filter. And this gives you all the different search options. So for your dashboard search, you can filter by location. So you can include all census tracts, all zip codes, or you can select them here. Um, so let's pick out a couple neighborhoods. Baker, Broadmoor, and Brownsfield. Um, you can filter by topics. So you can scroll through and select the topics that you'd like to view or the arrow will allow you to select all topics, all subtopics in a topic. So for our demo, let's do all economy topics. You can filter by population. So if you wanna see data that's just related to say, um, teens or children, you can pick those out. Or filter by classifications. So um, for instance, we can look at just social determinants of health. You can also turn on and off certain comparisons. So by default, everything that's available will appear if you don't select anything here. But I'm gonna select prior value and trend over time so we see just those two comparisons in our search. And then you can decide if you wanna see that subgroup data. So that would be the bar charts if available for age, gender, race, ethnicity. And this is one place that you can see all the different sources on the site. 
So you can also filter through and say, I just want to see data that comes from the Louisiana Department of Education or the National Center for Educational Statistics. Okay, so for our search filter, I entered three neighborhoods. I selected all economy data, and I just want to see these two comparisons. So then I'll hit search. All right, so before I scroll down and see my results, under search results, there's a link to save a link to the search. And so you can come back to your search if you save this URL. And the URL will always remain the same even as the data updates. All right, so scrolling down, um, so that's saving a link to the search. If I go back up to the top of the page, you can also convert any page on the site to a PDF by clicking this button or save a link there. All right, so here we have our topic area, economy, and then our subtopic, government assistance, and then our individual indicators with the locations we selected underneath. And as I scroll through, we can easily see kind of what's trending up, what's trending down, what's green, what's red. And for the trends, we need at least four time periods available to calculate the trend. And if the box is filled in with a dark background, that means it's a statistically significant trend. Um, and again, you can kind of see that information here in the legend under the trend. So per capita income, children living below poverty level. If we click into any of these, it will take us to our indicator detail page. And each indicator on the site has a similar looking page. So we have our indicator name, the location, and then our measurement period. And by default, we're gonna show the most recent measurement period, but you could also jump back in time to see some older data. And then we have text that says, what is this indicator and why is it important? All right, so here we have our locales. So we're looking at the neighborhood of Baker. And they have 34.2 children living below poverty level for this time period. The original source is the American Community Survey. Our measurement period is 2015 to 2019. We maintain this data if it were local data. Um, it would have the library's name here, and then when this data was last updated. Over to the right, we have our available comparisons. So we can see that um, this neighborhood's percentage is above the parish value, and in this case, um, we want the value to be lower, so it's red. Um, and when you hover over, it tells us a little bit more detail for each of these. And then our trend. Um, and then each of these have a change over time chart. If you go up here into the hamburger menu, if there's confidence intervals available, you can turn those on. And you can also change each chart to start at zero or not. So I can disable the zero-based y-axis if I'd like, although it looks like that's not gonna happen. <laughs> um, and then you can download and save your chart. If there were breakout data available, say by gender, that bar chart would be below here. And then as I scroll through, each of our indicators are mapped if they're available for more than one location. We can zoom out a little bit and see more. They zoom back in. We can manipulate our map. We can turn on the I button. It will give us the names of our locales. So right now we're looking at neighborhoods. You can change the background transparency. And then when you are happy, you can export your map. Um, right here, it shows us that this data is available at all of these different locales as well. So right now we're looking at the neighborhood of Baker. Our first view is each of the neighborhoods on the site grouped and compared to one another. So Baker is kind of in the middle. Um, we can see it here in the bar chart, here on the map. And if I click elsewhere, it will reload the page um, for that neighborhood. So say Scotlandville, it reloads our data up top and moves over on the map. And again, all the bar charts we can download and save. We can change our comparison here. 
So say we want to look at these neighborhoods compared to the Louisiana state value. If we do that, we can see which neighborhoods are below the state value and which are above. We can look at my favorite, the trend over time. And so we've got a lot of different colors here. So our dark green means that we're getting significantly better. Our dark red means that we're getting significantly worse. So we have a lot of variety here in the different neighborhoods. And then down here, we have the actual data table. And you can click and download this data for yourself, and it will give you a CSV file. And we have a little synopsis. So this tells us that there's 58 neighborhood values and the lowest value is zero, the highest value is 83.3, our data source again, and then related content. So from here, we can jump to related indicators, related promising practices, and related funding opportunities. So to learn more about who lives in Scotlandville, if we go up to the top of the page and click on this icon, this will take us to the demographic module, and specifically for the neighborhood of Scotlandville. You can also access demographics by going under dashboards and then demographic dashboard. So for the demographic module, what we're looking at first is a summary. You can jump into a deeper dive for each category here. But for our summary data, it tells us that we have 11,855 persons in Scotlandville and the population change is going down. And then each time there's an opportunity to create a pie chart or a bar chart, the system will do so, and then you can download and save that visual. And what's neat is that it will compare your smaller locations to the larger. So for instance, we have the neighborhood compared to the parish compared to the state, and we have both the raw number count and the percent of population. Population by age group, population by sex, households and income. If I jump back to the top of the page here, clicking on view all demographic variables will give you a list of all the 250 demographic variables. So you can use this list to um, find what you're looking for and then click on check mark for the locale you're interested in. So for instance, um, population age 25 plus with a bachelor's degree by neighborhood, if we click on that, it will take us to another mapped version. So we can look at this both by the percent and by the raw number. So for um, our neighborhood we have highlighted. And then we can change it here. And then it will reload our map. And we can see this data here. So just like our indicator detail pages, all the demographic data is mapped and charted as well. All right, great. So our newest tool on CityKey offers an easy way to bring all the data on the site together into an easily downloadable report. And you can access that under Tools and Resources and then Location Report Builder. And with the Location Report Builder, you can rebuild a report around a particular location. Um, just keeping in mind where we have data available. So the most comprehensive data will be found at the parish level, but you can build a report around any locale. So once you select your locale, it will fill that in our first block, and then we can choose what we want to add to our report. Um, so we can add indicator data, demographic data, socio needs index data, maps, the legend, text box to put in your own interpretations, and then divider lines. So say I want to make a report about poverty. I put in my keyword, and then I'll select my related indicator. So if I want a deeper dive into children living below poverty level, over on the right-hand side, it will show me my available components to add to my report. And if you hover over each, it will give you an example of what that would look like. Um, so I'm going to select a few to add to our report. So let's add some charts of cities within the location, or change over time chart, maybe a gender breakout. We'll do the indicator value. 
We can do maps. We can do tables. Um, and then you can also include the source name, the what is this indicator text, the why is it important, and the measurement period text. So I added a few different components. And how this works is it's on a, a drag and drop basis. So each time I see a pencil over here, I can go in and edit. So say for instance, I wanna go like that and I'll say children living below poverty level in East Baton Rouge Parish. That's what I'd like to title my report. And let's give it a fancy header and center it. Okay, make that larger. And then I'm gonna X out this. This is our indicator name that filled in. Don't need that, I put it in the title. Now we have our source, our indicator text, and our measurement period. I'm gonna bring these all up onto the same line. And we'll do something like that, and we'll drag it, and we'll put this in the middle. Okay, and then we have our um, smaller locales within the parish. We have our change over time chart. If I don't want it to look so drastic, I can come up here and have it be a zero base Y axis. So I can manipulate my chart. Here's my percentage for the parish. Here's my gender breakout. Here's a chart we included. And it's highlighting in red because that's telling me it's going over into the second page here on the page break. So let's pull that up and let's X that one out, say we don't want it. Okay, so I can keep going and add to my report with more indicator information, more demographic information. But if I'm done, I can preview it here. And then there's a couple different ways that you can save this. So you can download and save as a PDF file. You can save to your web browser, or you can download a configuration file that you can come back to and then reload the report. Oh, and an error occurred. <laughs> well, when you download the PDF, um, it tells you the website name and our download date. So this tool is a great way to come with a one pager for a report or kind of quickly pull together some different information. The Promising Practices module is a collection of programs geared towards improving community health that have shown to be effective. And there's over 2,300 promising practices in the database. We have the ability to search the database by topic. Down here is the topic subtopic, ranking category or target audience. So our target audience, children, teens. Our rankings can be found here. And with regards to rank, we developed a ranking system of three categories. There's a good idea an effective practice, and an evidence-based practice. And an evidence-based practice is the gold standard. It's been shown to be statistically significant, peer-reviewed, replicated, and evaluated. And an effective practice means that it's been evaluated, but not statistically significant. And a good idea means that it's a good idea, but maybe there hasn't been time to evaluate it yet. Okay. So let's do a search. I can do a keyword search up here. So say I'm interested for programs having to do with obesity. So it will filter out and we can see that I've gone to 2300 plus practices down to 171. Let's say that I'm really interested in programs having to do with obesity in teenagers. If I click here, I can refine it further. And now we're down to 45 results. I can save a link to the search to share with a colleague or come back to it later. Um, but over here on the left-hand side are actual promising practices. So if I click into one of these, like our healthy study, it takes us to the program. And at the top, we have our program name, our ranking, the description, the goal or mission, the impact of the program, and results or accomplishments. 
And what's really neat is that we include contact information for who originally ran the program or practice and if there's any associated websites or web links to find out more. And then at the bottom of our practice, we can jump to related indicators, related reports or funding opportunities, and related promising practices here. Um, another resource on the site is our funding opportunities. And this is a collection of national grants that our research team develops and maintains. Um, they're categorized by topic area, so general health, alcohol and drug use, children's health. And these are updated regularly, so they're always active opportunities. Um, and when you click on each, it should take you directly to the learn more or to apply page. Okay, and then our last resource that we'll visit on the site is the CHNA guide. And this feature walks you through the different stages of a needs assessment and implementation strategy. So if we go into assess, there's different steps here where you can assess. Step one, define and understand our service area, and then we analyze data, gather community input, and if you click show all, it will expand these. So it kind of walks you through, provides ideas and resources, and even links to full reports that Conduit has been a partner on. So for instance, how is our service area defined? Is it by geography or specialized target population? And then for our demographics, it will link to the demographics dashboard. And we have an example from a hospital in Hawaii. And then we can look at zip codes with high socioeconomic need by exploring the socio needs index. And then tips for our final report. Next step would be analyzing the data. So how do we want to compare our data? Do we want to compare to other locations? Healthy People 2030, historical data, look for disparities, and then how are we going to do our analysis? And so this goes on and on. But it's very helpful if you're planning a health assessment in the community. All right, so I know we walked through a lot of different resources in just a short amount of time. I um, just want to pause and see if there's any questions in our chat or in our Q&A. Um, and it looks like Alec had a question about data previously. Um, so what I can do is, Alec, if you're interested, I can unmute you. And I will do that now. And you're welcome to uh, chat your question. All right, well, maybe we'll catch up with Alec in the future. Um, all right, so thank you all for your time. Um, Andrew, do you have any follow-up questions or comments? Uh, no, just um, if anybody has any questions, um, they can reach out to the uh, reference desk at the main library or reach out to me. And thank you for doing wonderful. this. <laughs> thank you. Have a wonderful day.